You must, must realise by now the English are absolutely obsessed with health and safety. What we're doing out there now, they just would not happen in England. Uh, yeah. Okay, we actually move on. Right, I've got to do the next section in 10 minutes, I think. Tooling as the method. Obviously, I'm obsessed with making tools. And the little video that was playing a minute ago <coughs> illustrates one of the tools I made, which is a rotary spindle device on the end of a chainsaw bar. Um, I made it specifically because I wanted to do apertures, you know, and concave surfaces. A chainsaw is brilliant at doing convex surfaces, but not so easy to do concave. So I made this tool, and I don't know how. Here's my first go at turning a chainsaw, in a graphic example, into a different tool. Um, it's actually got a milling cutter, it's got like a rotary shaft with a milling cutter on it. I didn't make it, um, but I did. This is a design of the first one with a bar with a spindle on the end. It's just a, just a schematic. Um, oh, oh, now I've done it. I pressed the wrong button. How cool is that? I can use my phone as a remote control. <laughs> so this is more what it became. And that again shows my 3D graphics work. And I even used it in a virtual world. Yeah? <laughs> I did virtual milling with it through a block of material. You think the English aren't nuts? You now know they are. Yeah? In a good way, of course. Yeah, virtual milling with objects. And this is a cutter, effectively being made. You know, the idea of how am I going to make unusual cutters. And this is the object itself. But the cutters I use are actually designed for milling metal. Uh, they're great. They actually work as scrapers rather than gouges because the rake of the tooth is too shallow. It's designed for metal. Uh, but it may leaves a beautiful surface. I would design it differently in the future. But the great thing about these cutters is before CNC milling, Every gear, every component had its own shape cutter for making that slot. And uh, I've got all sorts of shapes, and this is the most used one, is the V-shaped round. Yeah, and I use it to make that pod-shaped object earlier. Mushroom gills, you wouldn't believe, guys. Let's hope I find the next photographs. Another, another chair. Oh, here we go, mushrooms. You have to see this. If you haven't seen this, come up and look at this picture. Yeah, and the one before it, because that is my mushroom. In, in this country, bears are the stock and trade of everything. Yeah? Bears and eagles. In our country, it's mushrooms and owls. Did you, yeah. did you bring that tool with you? <coughs> no. No? Oh, okay. <laughs> no. I intended to bring a lot of stuff, um, but <coughs> it's a bit right. Pe people actually cautioned me about crossing the border, and so I just came lightweight. Uh, it's a good thing I was. I was nearly overweight anyway, so... Next year. Next year, next year. Okay, so mushrooms, and here we go, more mad tooling. These are... This is screw cutting with a chainsaw. I designed, being a potter, I designed, I used a car wheel, made a giant potter's wheel for wood. <laughs> yeah, a turning milling table. So it goes around slowly, about, I don't know, 8 RPM or something. And then you attack it with a chainsaw while it's going round. Oh. Absolutely. What fun, mate, I'll tell you. <laughs> what fun. It makes these mad shapes. Look at these. These are like pieces of cloth being wrung out. Yeah. It's just like cutting a screw, but it's a, it's a freehand screw. Yeah, I, these were selling like hotcakes. But I get, the problem with me is I'm bored. The moment I can do something, I want to learn to do something else. Yeah. So this is it, this is me on my turntable with my first air-conditioned helmet. My old motorcycle helmet with a computer fan on the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a piece of muslin gauze and some camcorder batteries that someone gave me. Yeah, and it's literally just an old car wheel. And then I bolt the wood and here I am milling out a giant cedar jar with it. Yeah. So instead of turning traditionally, which is the momentum of the wood against the cutter doing the cutting, here I'm, I'm doing rotary milling. The cutting action is not the speed of it turning. That's just presenting the work. And I'm cutting with a chainsaw. Back must have hurt. Yeah, I have to say, 
Yeah, a lot of the tooling methods I do, the reason why I don't do them every day is because they are so abusive to your body. Yeah, as you'll see in a minute. Um, here, I've actually got on a special device I designed for limiting the depth of the cut of a chainsaw. And it's just made out of two bits of wood. It took me four years to work out how to do it. And just like my helmet that looks really simple, the simple solutions to things are the best when they look poetic, you know? Just like anything creative, when it looks easy. Um, so I made this device. It's a bit of spiral cutting. It's a giant ceremonial goblet. Um, but the inside is milled with that same um, depth limiting guide. But what I discovered about that guide is that I can drill holes with it. I can use a chainsaw to drill a hole as big as the bar is on that chainsaw. Yeah? My standard bar on my 044 at home is two, two foot long. Yeah? And I can drill a hole through a piece of wood to that depth and it's perfect, more or less. And I can prove it because I've got a little film. These are some of the objects I experimented with. Here I am obsessed with making holes. Yeah? These are my speed cards. I couldn't pay the rent one month and we have a thing called a car boot sale. Yeah, which is where people just go along on a Sunday and sell all their, you know, like a garage sale, yeah? Yeah, so I made loads of speed cards, yeah, holes, yeah? I call them lenses, they're wooden lenses because they're apertures and pieces of wood. And it, like a camera obscura, there is a visual effect. The idea of having a, uh, you know, it actually distorts the image behind it by having that block of material around. Negative and positive space, you know, metaphysics, comes into it again as well. There's a spiritual thing. You know, I call these, as I, anyone who's been to my website, you might have discovered a thing called the portal, which is the biggest hole I ever made. It's 12 foot high. And it's Californian Redwood. Yes! I love America. <laughs> We're very lucky in our country, we've got a lot of Redwoods because the Victorian brought seed stock over and they, they loved it. They, the Victorians planted specimen trees everywhere. And they're now all about 100 years old. Yeah, and they're usually planted, a lot of them are planted too close to what are now houses. So I get the benefit of that. And it's a great material to work as a sculpture, as I'm sure you're, a lot of you are aware. So, more holes. And the thing about holes is, yeah, it's this idea of a lens, you know, it focuses energy. Yeah, it doesn't have to be light. Yeah, and that's why the portal is what it is, because it takes the observer, the person, who's presented with that object yeah, into a different view somehow, yeah? whether it's visually or mentally. Yeah, and that's the idea of the portal, is to, take, to make objects that actually empower us to be taken somewhere else. Yeah? And this is an example of the two foot holes. This is a massive lump of oak, it's a bench. And it's designed to rack champagne bottles for our very rich Surrey. Very rich, proper speaking Surrey people. Yeah. Because in Surrey, we speak the Queen's English, apparently. But no one bought it as a champagne bottle thing. A friend of mine eventually bought it, but it is an amazing object with those huge holes in it. Uh, more 3D design work, more cut holes. Very fossil-like, a lot of my work. You know, there's something, and here's an ammonite. Yeah, made by hand, with more tools, four inch gouges, love them. Yeah, I always thought gouges were too slow because I was young and stupid. But, uh, so I made myself, you can see them, what a fantastic surface this makes. I'm sorry again about the size of the pictures. But I used, I made a set of four inch gouges, and the big wide sweet one, I drive it with a, a sledgehammer, no, a club hammer. It makes the most, you can't actually get wood any smoother than a gouge because it compresses and shears the fibres so perfectly. And this is on, on my website again, people have been there. It's an aperture, but it's, the outside is dressed with this gouge and it just makes it so tactile. People just hug these objects. They go, oh, you don't mind if I touch it? And I go, no, please do. You know, if someone touches your work, you've won as a sculptor. It's a tactile art. Go on, please, slideshow work. It's my battery, right? I'm going to skip that. That was my miniature chainsaw that I'm not going to go into because we're running out of time. 
So, oh no, it's missed the best bit out. Okay, we are running short of time actually, because I know Bob's got to go. I've only got half an hour left and I'm sure you've got questions. I have, if I get time or you stay behind, an example of using that tool. I made a video of me using that tool to how to use a saw to drill that hole. Yeah, it's the most amazing thing you've ever seen. If I can't find it now, I'll, I'll move on because I'm running out of time. Okay, last part of the lecture, spirit as the hand of creation. Well, I'm sure you realise by now I'm an artist through and through. Uh, dancer, pretentious, literarist, whatever. Um, it is the reason I do everything, for passion. Yeah, I can't live any other way. But I've discovered along the way, there are, there are many facets of this. Oh, remote control, come on. I'm doing well, I've still got a voice. I could do with some water if, or a drink if someone could get me some. Thank you. Uh, this is me using graphics uh, to create sculptures and really take this idea of minimalistic, smooth surfaces, curves and apertures into a new plane. This is figurative work. This is what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm making a figurative piece here. It is, you know, my work is about the soul and the heart and the spirit and the mind. And it's what I want to do. I'm not, well, I'm not very good at it, but let's hope it's going to develop. But this, again, shows a graphic plan, a vision. As you know, sculpture is about vision. That's what you have as sculptors above people who don't sculpt. Well, not above, but... You know, you have a vision. You have to see what it is that you want to create. And this is the revol resulting object made in, in redwood. 